Hi everyone, welcome back. Last week on the show we learned how to assemble our cabinets. We also cut out some drawer fronts and back panels. But this week we need to build some drawers. There's a lot of materials and methods you could use for drawers. For this, I'm going to make my drawer stock out of just an ordinary 1x4. Um, pick one that's pretty clear. Clear means not too many splits and knots and things. And I'm going to resaw it down to half inch. And then I'm going to dovetail the front of it and nail the back of it. That's because all the stresses are in the front of the drawer. Now, for something like this, which is sort of a light duty cabinet, fairly small drawer, you'd probably be fine nailing it. Really, I'm only doing the dovetail joint because I want to show you how easy it is. But if you don't want to mess with dovetails, then, then feel free to nail it. Or um, there's lots of like miter lock joints you can do with a table saw. Many, many ways to build drawers, but I'm going to show you one of them. The setup for this is table saw blade run all the way up, which is still not quite thick enough, but we can flip the board over and get the bottom. And then when you're resawing things, it's very easy for it to sort of slip around. So you want to use a feather board, or there's lots of like sort of patent store bought things that do the same thing. But that feather board is good to squeeze the board up against the fence and um, make sure that it's the right thickness. Also gives you some kickback safety. I also have my um, riving knife in so that the curve doesn't bind. Uh, you could do other anti-kickback measures, but I find that between the two of those, this will actually be pretty safe. So, let's go ahead and cut that out. Make sure we got a push stick handy. That's one that came with my table saw. I should mention in passing that the proper tool for resawing would be some kind of bandsaw. Bandsaws don't need near the horsepower to push a blade through the same thickness of wood. So I'm going to build a bandsaw one of these days, but I just haven't gotten around to it. So for now I have the table saw. But now I have my drawer stock, I'm going to clean that up just a little bit, trusty smooth plane, and um, then I can you know, measure the drawers more precisely and uh, cross cut everything to length. So, that'll keep me busy for a few minutes. When you're doing hand planing like this, it's a good idea to have a bench hook, just a piece of a board with a fork in it. That can clamp right here, and then you can hook the board into it and plane onto it. Handier than a vise. I'm not saying that just because I don't have a vice yet. So, can you see these pitch pockets? You don't want those on your plane. So kind of playing around those and uh, you go back and cut them off later. So I'll get that done and uh, then we'll cut out some drawer stock. Next step is to plow a little groove along the edge of all the drawer stock for the um, sides and fronts. That's going to receive the bottom panel, which is 532 plywood. Although, always check the thickness of any plywood you're using because it tends to be a little smaller than what they quote it as. Um, I'll just do that on the table saw because it's pretty thin. It should be about quarter inch deep, maybe 3 16 from the bottom. That's personal preference for this kind of wood. Um, different people it might be a little more, a little less, but that, that should work fine for this kind of drawer. Now there's a lot of different ways to cut dovetails, probably at least a dozen that I've heard of, um, ranging from just chopping them with a chisel all the way up to like CNC robots and things. Now if you're working with hand tools, the state of the art for 800 years has been 
this guy, dovetail saw, um, you can get them for $12, $15, and they work pretty well. Now, the first two or three you do, you're not going to be happy with. By the time you do 20 or 50, it'll be about as hard as picking your teeth. But, you know, you just cut the pins and tails, and then you uh, clear out the extra wood with, with any chisel that has a bevel on it. Uh, so no big deal. That's like the lowest tech solution. But so, that's a pretty good way to go. What we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to do it on the table saw, which is sort of a modification of the same setup. Uh, band saws actually work great for that, or if you have like a, a high-end jigsaw, you can even use that. But in general, you want to lay out your tails first. I hope you can see that on the camera. The X, of course, is the wood that's going to get taken out. And then once, once you have that, then you can just set it on the drawer front, and then, then you can um, sketch through it with your pencil to, to lay out your tails. So, and the way you do that, you generally, is you use your bevel. They say for soft woods, you want a uh, seven and one angle. So, you get that carpenter style by using your square. And if it just crosses at the one eighth mark, inch mark, and the seven eighth inch mark, then that's one and seven. Uh, so make one, don't bother marking them all out. Make one and then we'll use that as a template to set up the table saw. Oh, and, and they don't need to be geometrically perfect. In period, cabinet makers used to just draw them any which way and they put them together and the furniture's still around 300 years later. So just, just make sure that the, um, they're pointed the right way and you're good to go. So I hope you can see what I'm doing here. I, just, I ran my blade up and then I looked down it, make sure it's at the right angle with my bevel, keeping in mind that there's definitely a range here that would work. What you do is you hold the bevel like off by about a quarter inch, like a quarter inch out of alignment, and then you eyeball that quarter inch of, of sky and make sure it's the same width at the top and the bottom. It's a because you can't get your square your bevel right up against it. But that looks pretty good. Now we're going to set the depth or you know, blade height, I guess you could call it. So we can do that. Here's our drawer stock. Our pieces. And you just bring it down until it just slides over. And if you sort of rotate that blade, it should just just microscopically, microscopically scratch the board above it. I think that'll work. I think. gauge to cut these. As a matter of safety, you shouldn't have a bunch of junk on top of your saw head. But it seems like I usually do it. Okay. And you should just be, I have, you know, I have this extra board on here. So I should be able to just hold those up and just eyeball the lines and just take out the wood I don't need. Now obviously the saw only tilts one way so you're going to have to mark on both sides to get them all. But let's see how that works.
hand saw did a pretty good job of cutting those out. You can see there's still a little fuzz where we wasted them. So all we gotta do now is just take a chisel and clear that out. For our board to work on. And just take your time, don't try to push too much wood at once. But this stuff cuts pretty easy. I'm not sure if this is larch or hemlock. This is some, some kind of white wood. Pairs pretty well across the grain. Be careful about making drawers out of pine. Pine does not dovetail well. I've done it, but it likes to sort of squish instead of cutting. And we like cutting, not squishing. Okay. So you're going to do all of them, but clean them up mostly. Remember, you're going to be, you know, gluing them and puttying them and say, you know, don't try to be perfect at this point. Once you have that, you find your drawer front. And you put them, put this against your nice square workbench, which is why you need a nice square workbench. Put this across it, make sure everything lines up nice. And it's really easy. Just take an awl or a marking knife or a sharp mechanical pencil and transfer those tails onto the pens. Okay, for this part, I've squared up my blade and used the same bevel, which has been on the same setting this whole time, to set my miter gauge and angle. And I'm just going to cut these t er, pins. Now, I'm going to do these singly instead of clamping them together. Reason being, they actually need to fit against the other joints, so we need just a little higher level of precision. Um, of course, there's only two of them because there's only one per cabinet, so it's just not a big deal. You really want to look which way you're going on these. So this first cut. It's going to be the right hand side. Okay, we've got all our pins and tails cut out. I've kind of lined everything up and made sure it'll fit. I haven't squeezed it together yet because I don't want to, you know, I want that first tight fit to be the last fit. Now you're, you're aiming for kind of what the engineering textbooks call an interference fit, sort of a molecule tighter than it needs to be, so it, it really comes in there tight. Uh, but you don't want it to be so tight that when you um, push it together, it blows out. So that's, that's kind of where experience comes in. I guarantee the first fear you do will end up being a little too loose. But I cut those out. I, um, you know, a couple places I paired a little bit with a chisel. Just took a little bit of shavings off to make sure they fit. And I think we're ready to go gluing the drawers together. Uh, here's where the other shoe drops. I'm not sure this method was any faster than cutting and chopping by hand. For me. But I've done a lot of hand dovetails. I'm willing to go out on a limb here and guess that most of my viewers are more comfortable with a table saw than they are with a dovetail saw. So, the table saw method works well. Uh, I hadn't done it for a while, uh, but it's, it's fine, but I'm not sure it's any improvement over just using hand tools. So gluing drawers is one of those activities where you want to have everything laid out ahead of time. Have the clamps you're going to use, have the glue bottle, your damp rag for wiping up, squeeze out. Uh, for dovetail drawers, some calls are really helpful. You put those between the clamps and the drawers. It lets you really gromp down on those clamps without destroying your drawers. But 
this is all ready to go. And there's a whole debate in cabinet making circles about whether or not you should move the pins or the tails, of course. I'm more of a pins man. And you want to use what I would call a lot of glue. Because the extra is just going to squeeze out. And what you don't want is to have not enough glue. That would be lame. Nice and tight fit. You take your mallet. to each other. Do the other side. In the old days they used hide glue, which uh, is good stuff if you use it right, but it's not very strong. And so the dovetail itself was really important because the glue didn't have a lot of mechanical strength. It just sort of kept the dovetail from slipping. Looks good so far. We just wipe out that extra. Yeah. Very dovetailish. Put the calls there, can you see that? Calls on the end. And some sort of big pipe clamp or bar clamp. I like pipe clamps because they're cheap. I'm cheap. And I would rather have a lot of cheap clamps than a couple of good clamps because you can really just never have enough clamps. About as tight as you can get it with one hand. And uh, it's not completely square. Yeah. Uh, kind of rack it. Close to square. Okay. And then so on. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the other. But um, while the glue is drying, you can go ahead and cut out the bottom panel. Which just fits in that slot there. The reason I don't cut them out ahead of time is because it's always better to measure the thing you're cutting something for. Now that that's all together, I can just measure it. Remember, we made that thing a quarter inch deep. So, 13 and 3 sixteenths should do it. But, 11 and 5 sixteenths. So, I'll go cut that, slide it in, and it'll help hold it square while it dries. So, bottom panel. You don't ever want to glue these because the um, drawer sides are made out of real wood and the bottom panel is made out of plywood and they work in very different ways. So if you glue them, you're just kind of asking for them to pump. And that's feeling just a little bit splitty. It isn't actually splitting yet. But I don't like wood making silly noises. So I'm just going to put a clamp on that to sort of support it while I slide it in there. Sort of a better safe than sorry school of cabinet making.
Yeah, we'll get that. Another thing you can do is you can wax this groove ahead of time. It can cause finishing problems, but it makes it slide a lot better. But I'm sure I'll get this out. That's why I tape my clamps, so if you really have to, you can use them without calls. It doesn't always want to go, but we'll make it go. Okay. Then I just grab another pipe clamp and I close up that back. And the whole thing should be square. Well, we, we can nail in the back piece later. It's not really. Back pieces on drawers just basically keep your stuff from running out. They're not very structural, so we can add that whenever, and it's probably not even going to get glued. It's going to get a couple of little common nails. Just like that. And let that dry for, you know, at least 20 minutes because that's how long it takes the glue to dry off. Something like this, which is a structural joint, I might give it like half an hour. And anyway, I've got another drawer to build. So I'll do that and um, then we'll move on to do the drawer fronts. Okay, the drawer boxes are essentially done. And the last thing we need to do is just flush up those dovetails. And uh, you'll find that once you sand those flush, it'll make them look really nice. So I've just clamped this drawer box to my workbench, trusty belt sander. I'm just going to sand that. You want to start off cross grain to cut fast, and then you turn over with the grain so that you know the final sanding is smooth. So that should only take a second, and I'll do the front and sides, and then we can set these aside. Well, our drawer boxes are done. A little bit of work, but they're looking good. Next week, we move into the final stages of the project. We'll talk about sanding, painting, and finally install the cabinets. See you then.